this afternoon we are dealing with difficult conversations. Somebody say difficult, difficult. Conversations. conversations. Let me hear it louder. Difficult, difficult. Conversations. conversations. You remember in John chapter 21 from verse 15, uh, there was a difficult conversation between Jesus and uh, Peter. You remember when Peter betrayed Jesus and then Jesus died and rose from the grave? And then he came to the riverside and Peter was fishing. And then he made some fish and asked Peter to come and eat. And when they sat down and were talking, Jesus turned to Peter. and said, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than all of this? And they started the discussion about their walk together. If you are here, say yes. yes. Are you with me? Now, in relationship, there's always going to be some times when there's a need for difficult conversations. Some difficult conversations happen when a problem has developed. Some difficult conversations happen before a problem develops. Now, for most of you, I'm going to be dealing today with a conversation before a problem develops. And then sometime later, we'll come to part two of it, the conversation after a problem has developed. If you help me, say yes. yes. Uh, if you're here, say yes. yes. For example, the conversation Jesus had with Peter was after. There was a betrayer, and then Jesus had to talk it over with Peter. Are you still here? Yes, What's wrong with you? Are you here? Then if you are here, tell your face. Your face doesn't know you are here. Are you here? Yes, sir. Then talk. Oh, I'm here. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you have my voice, I hear you, sir. Yes, sir. You see, when you are in a relationship, one of the reasons people don't have some difficult conversations is that it is tempting to assume that somebody you are in a relationship with understands some things you are thinking. Don't assume. It can be dangerous to assume. Don't assume. You know, that's why many times when we counsel with a lot of people who are about to get married, we find out that they were preparing to get married, but they never prepared for the marriage itself. Uh, a young girl is being employed as a wife. A young man is being employed as a husband. And they didn't give you a job description. There's no, descript there's no talk about what it's going to be like. They just assumed, when I marry, I know how marriage looks like. Bad mistake. Very bad mistake. If you're with me, say yes. yes. A few days ago, one of our young people that is a pastor in one of the satellite churches <laughs> brought a girl to me and said, I want to marry her. I said, okay. I said, no problem. Sit down. She sat down. And I sat down and analyzed for her what the life of a pastor's wife looks like. When I finished, I said, do you understand? He said, yes. It's okay. Now, go and decide whether you want to marry a pastor or not. I said, because what people see is the pulpit glamour. They, you are not hearing me. They don't understand nothing about the behind the scene. Are you still here? So don't assume that people know. Second thing that makes people not to get involved in difficult conversations is that they don't want to incite conflict. They just want to pretend that things are okay and just carry on until the wedding happens. But that's a bad mistake. Because what you don't make a matter now will become a matter arising at the end. You're not hearing me. If you don't negotiate it now, you have to navigate through it later. So you better negotiate it now. Come on, if you're here, say yes. yes. Please, let me give you this wisdom in case I don't get to that later. If you're in a relationship and you notice something you don't like, talk about it. But in a marriage relationship, talk about it. Don't assume that after marriage you bring it up. That's a bad mistake. After you get wedded, you won't have the chance to bring it up except in a quarrel. 
talk about it now. So don't, don't say, let, let me just, I don't want to rock the boat. Let us just get to the altar. No, 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 no. Deal with it now. Because more than 80% of the crisis you are going to see in your home are life patterns that started before the wedding. Did you hear me? So talk about it now. So if it's not changing, you move out quickly instead of staying in a slavery for life. Are you with me? Don't forget that the way you affect as you start the relationship, the way you start the journey will affect the course of the journey. Be careful to start right. And please, when you are negotiating your destiny, nothing is off the table. Let me repeat that. When you are negotiating your destiny, nothing is off the table. Are we dealing with young people? If you have my voice, say yes. Can you lift your hand and say, whenever I'm negotiating my destiny, nothing is off the table. So don't be, don't be careless about it. Just get into that. Now, I told you today we're dealing with conversations before crisis. Let me give you eight conversations to have in a relationship. If we don't get to all of them, no challenge. The first one is conversation about spiritual growth. Conversation about spiritual growth. If you're in a relationship with somebody, one of the most difficult conversations young people have is asking the person questions about his or her faith and spiritual growth. Please, I beg you, if you want, I will kneel down and lie down and beg you. Please, seriously, get into that area. Never be in a relationship with somebody pointing toward marriage. And they have difficult conversation. When did you get born again? What is your vision in God's kingdom? Do you pay your tithes? Who mentors you? You are not hearing me. If you have my voice, say yes. yes. When do you fast? Get into conversations. What books do you read? Are you baptized? Do you talk in tongues? Are you living? Are you hearing me? What do you partner with in your church? What department do you serve? The reason I'm saying this is because all of you here assume you are wiser than us. And you think that, you know, all these things we are preaching in church is just to get you to obey us. And the question I always ask you is this. If you do this thing I'm saying now, how does it benefit me? How does it put money on my table, on my, in my hand? How does it put food on my table? How does it raise my profile? The reason I'm telling you this is because it has serious implications. Listen to me. If you're here, say yes. Look up here, look up here, look up here, look up here. Hello? Hello? You see, if you marry a God-fearing person, it doesn't mean there'll be no crisis. But there's one thing you can guarantee is this. There's an extent that person cannot go. No, you didn't hear me. If you marry somebody who is not God-fearing, Anything can happen. Anything. Anything. Uh, even if I wasn't a pastor now, I can't wake up and think divorce. No matter what happens, I want to negotiate it and get it over with. But somebody who is not God-fearing, any small thing, get out of my house, does it happen? Yes, huh? yes, Do you notice that when somebody is not God-fearing, if he messes up, even to apologize is a problem. Ah? Yes. Huh? Yes. If you get out, am I the only one that slept with somebody? I beg. If you don't like, get out of this home. You are the one he's offended. You are the one begging him now. Please, what I'm saying does it happen? <laughs> somebody was telling me about the husband. How the husband, she went into the room of the husband where the man, he traveled. He said, uh, don't enter this room. And she entered the room and saw, the thing she saw is indescribable, including human skull. Now, explain that. He said, pastor, I am packing out. 
I said, I didn't join you. Why are you telling me? <laughs> Tell the man that joined you. But can you imagine that you are living with somebody, both of you are going to church, and he has a skull in his room? Please, have difficult conversations. Are they hearing me? Are they hearing me? There are many people in church who you don't know who they are. Don't keep assuming that somebody is born again because they're clapping hand in church. There are many witches here. They are agents of devils. There are people who are anointed by mommy water to destroy good destinies. Please, what I'm saying, is that true? There are men here who are wizards, so. They're sitting down here smiling. You don't know they came to take destiny away. While we are standing, sitting here now, looking at each other, you don't know that the Baba, the Lila is around. Somebody is ready to bab your head, muru muru. You are not hearing me. So better, better, better be sure of who you are going into destiny with. Second conversation. Are you still here? Second conversation is conversation about moral boundaries. Conversation about moral boundaries. Please look up here. When you start a relationship with somebody and the relationship is progressing, and both of you have started liking each other very well, you suddenly notice that your passion for one another is growing. Sit down and have a conversation about your moral boundaries. Many young people don't have conversations on that because they feel like I am trying to drive him away. I'm trying to drive her away. No, have that conversation. It will save your destiny. Particularly those of you who are planning to get married. Marriage is honorable. The bed undefiled. Fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. So be careful that in the issue of your marriage, you set your boundary. Somebody say boundary. boundary. Can I say boundary? boundary. Can I say boundary? One of the reasons we don't do it is because we think we are rejecting the person. We are rejecting the person. You are not rejecting the person. You are saving him and saving yourself. You can marry him and then the judgment begins and the business crashes, the health crashes, the career crashes. And tomorrow both of you are struggling with something you didn't prepare for. Because nobody knows tomorrow. The young man you are looking at here now, looking as if he's going to conquer the world, can get up tomorrow and you see one sickness in him that you can't handle. That's why we, he can lose his job. He can have an accident and you have an, imbes, uh, uh, sorry, an, an invalid in your hand. Are you with me? All kinds of things. So don't put yourself in a bad mess. Have a difficult conversation. These are moral boundaries. The good thing about boundaries is this. Even when you fail, you set a boundary. You know I crossed a boundary. But when there's no boundary, you know where you crossed. Are you hearing me? If there was no boundary, there's nothing to apologize or repent or walk away from. Do you understand me? That's why you set a boundary. If there's no boundary, anything happens. But if there's a boundary, even when you messed up, you know I crossed this boundary. This is about you discuss it again and you say no, not and you go for counseling and somebody prays for you and helps you to recover yourself without a boundary, everything goes. Without a boundary, sin becomes a lifestyle. Without a boundary, sin becomes a lifestyle of your relationship. Without a boundary, sin becomes a lifestyle of your relationship. So discuss moral boundaries. This is how far we go. This is how far we don't go. This is a line we draw. This is a line we don't draw. This is who I am. This is who... This is how I behave. This is how I live my life. Draw the line. You say, no, I don't want to drive him away. I don't want to drive him away. The moment you notice that you are liking him so much and she's liking you so much, put a boundary. That's a difficult conversation to have. You sit down. Are you with me? Uh, are you with me? When we are cutting, the way we had it was very funny. It wasn't a really simple thing to do. I brought a material photocopied it. 
about some people, their relationship and all of that, their sexual life in their relationship and all of that. And it was something that was not much of a Christian. So I get it, I gave her, I took my own, and I left. We read it together and all of that. So she came, and we were going somewhere that day, and I just brought it up and said, what do you think about that? I, I, I wanted to know what was going on in her mind. And she wanted to know what was going on in my mind. She said, okay, what do you think about that? I said, you tell me first. She said, never. That's not what I want in a relationship. I said, okay. He said, what do you want? He said, that's what I want. You're not with me. Are you still here? He said, that's what I want. How can I be dating you and we will not be chopping life? No, that's what I want. He said, no. We talked as if we were arguing and all of that. We were walking toward somewhere in uh, Room of Mercy that day. We were just talking. And then she was getting walked up and all of that. So I started laughing. As I'm a pastor, I needed to know what demon is in you <laughs> before I kill myself for nothing. I brought another material for to copy it and I gave to her. And I showed her, I said, you take this and you study, you see what I marked on that. This is how to set boundaries in our relationship so that we don't destroy our future going forward. It was a simple conversation. But it was important we had it. So in the midst of that, we don't take a journey that I won't be here today. No, you didn't hear me. Are you still with me? Lift your hand. I speak over you today in the name that's above every name. May God give you grace for reconversation. Yeah. Since you didn't say amen, can I talk to somebody else? Yeah. The third conversation we must have is conversation about career and life goals. Your career and life goals. You got to ask yourself, where are we going? A young man says, I like you. You say, I like you. I like you too. And the young man says, no worry. You say, I will make it. You say, I know you will make it, but tell me how. All of you are here. Anybody that shares his dreams and goals with you, ask him about his life plan. Did we talk about life plan a few days ago? Yes. Ask him about his roadmap. I they go America, I they go America, how? I will be a billionaire, How? Where are you they go? How? You are not going to get it from Jim Mack <laughs> and from MMM and then BA Forest. The way people are looking at me. Or you think I forgot Naira Bet? <laughs> <laughs> Touch your neighbor and say, How? I go make him, I go, no mind, this thing go work. Which thing go work? It's as you see me now, as you see me now. <laughs> I'm a great man going somewhere to happen. Now lie. Show us your plan. If you have my voice, say yes. yes. You cannot partner with somebody until both of you define the future. What future are we working toward? That's a conversation we must have. What career path? Young lady, yes. Uh, we are coming together, yes. Uh, let's talk about your career. Uh, tell me about your dream. What's the life plan? How are you taking this journey? Uh, you see, I, I don't have any plan. I just want to get married. Anywhere you go, I follow you. <laughs> eh? <laughs> Are you sure? Yes, so. Yes, so. As far as I'm concerned, anybody I marry, I give him my whole life. <laughs> Turn the fire quiz. I am running. 
also can, can handle. Same thing with the young man. He said, don't mind anything they're talking about. I know myself. I know myself. Give me three years. How? Somebody say how. how? There are some people you saw here now who told you, give me three years, three years ago. That's still not started now. They're asking for give me another three years. That's the reason many young girls are in a relationship for seven years and they don't get to the altar. Every year they postpone. Every year they postpone. Every year they postpone. Because the person they are dating, they are dating on hope, not on plan. Faith goes with a plan. Number four. Is anybody hearing my voice? You can't cut and cut and it's not cutting. The fourth conversation that is difficult to have, but you must have it, is conversations about issues in past relationships. If there is anything popping up in the person's past relationship, talk about it. They are not here. All of you here listening. I didn't mean every time you see that, you say, tell me about your former boyfriend. What did happen? Are you with me? Uh, are you with me? Were you sleeping with him? How many times? <laughs> Anybody that is talking to you like that, you know, number one, he's immature. Number two, he doesn't deserve your confidence. Because he's looking for what to use to hold over your head. So if you talk to the person like that, you are more stupid than him. Am I talking to somebody here too? So don't get into that. But then in relationship, there are things that will pop up. Hello? Maybe you, she notices that uh, you keep chatting with your former girlfriend. The same person you call your ex. But every time he calls and you pick a phone, hello, how are you? <laughs> Jaybreak now. <laughs> Let's, talk. Let's talk about this. Am I talking to somebody here too? You must have that conversation. Or you had a child out of wedlock. And the, husband, the man is around. Or you had a daughter, a child, and the girl is around. We need to talk about it. It's issues out of your past relationship. If you have me say yes. Any person you are dating. And the person had a child before and doesn't tell you. And you're almost approaching wedding and the person didn't tell you. Please, anybody that cannot talk to you about something as serious as that is hiding many other things. If he doesn't believe you are going to accept him concerning that, he won't believe you are going to accept him over other things. Don't believe him, walk away. He's not an honest person. If you had a child out of wedlock, you don't have to tell me on the first date. You don't have to tell me on the second one. You don't have to tell me six months or three months into the relationship. But if you notice that we are approaching issues of decision, Moving from dating to courtship, you must tell me. Are you hearing me here? The circumstances of that child must be discussed. And we say, okay, do we proceed? Don't we proceed? If I tell him now, he may walk away. It's better he walked away than he punishes you for the rest of your life. Are we clear? So you bring on the table and talk about it. You talk about it. And then you move from there. Time is going, so I'm not going to get into more details on that. Are you catching me? So these conversations, not all of them are not really very exciting to talk about, but it is very good. It helps you to learn about the person and come to terms with the past of that person and know how to manage the person. Hello? There are some people that had very bad breakups that became public, either in church or in your former school or whatever. You are aware of the breakup. Talk about it. Talk about it. Stupid young girls, you know what they do? They say, I don't care. Maybe a sister in church was dating a young man and they had a nasty breakup and they just step in there and grab the young man and they're trying to pose with him. You may be posing with a dangerous, toxic person. <laughs> don't take sides when there's a problem. Get to know the details first. Because everybody will present himself as being good until you have a problem with the person. You are not hearing me. A nasty person is a nasty person. You may not know because he's still nice to you. But the day he becomes, you have a quarrel. That's why you see the nasty side of the person. Do you know there are some people, the moment you have a problem with them, they must mess you up. 
Huh? Every information they have about you must come out. Please talk to me. Now, I, I remember one time I was counseling with a young man. He came to my office and then started telling stories about the girl that he was dating and all of that. Went from here, went to this, went to this. He was trying to justify stopping the relationship. I was telling me so many nasty things about her. He talked about this. I just kept quiet. I wanted to hear him. When he finished, I looked him in the face. I said, do you know something? He said, what? I said, you're actually a wicked person. He was shocked because he was telling me things to convince me that the girl is a bad person. I said, you're actually a wicked person. Every small thing this girl shared with you in confidence, you walk up here and you are telling me all of them. And none of them has anything to do with your quarrel with her. Just to make her look bad in my eye. I said, believe me, you are the problem of this relationship. I sent for the girl, she came to my office. And I said to him, I said, listen. This young man, don't let him marry you. Walk away. The young man I'm talking about today, I know the person this girl married. Because it took her another two years or so, she got married. That's some time ago. Another. This young man I'm talking about has begged me money this year. Not himself, his wife. They're not worshipping him. Because they can't feed. They don't even have accommodation. That's the person he was dying for at that time because he was doing well. But he was a nasty person. Can you lift your hand? I stretch my hand toward you. May God give you discernment. I wish you can say amen well. I'm trying to see how much I can run. The fifth, fifth conversation that is inconvenient you are going to have is conversations about family and in-law relationships. Conversations about family and in-law relationships. Hello? Hello? If you are here, say yes. As you are approaching your wedding... As you are approaching making a decision to go with somebody to her father's house, there has got to be some serious conversations that bring up questions about the person's background. You are not hearing me. If you have my voice, say yes. yes. You are going to ask questions about the person's background, about the family about issues. I don't have all the time to give you that. Sit down, ask yourself, what do I really want to know about that? And ask. The person will answer the ones they are convenient with. Are you with me? Uh, are you with me? I was talking with a young lady and she said, I don't even know my father. My mother has refused to tell me about my father. The young man is saying, until I know my father. I said, no, 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 no. You should tell him. Your mother refused. He said, go and talk to your mother. I've talked to my mother. She refused. I'm trying to find out. No problem. And I must pay diary to the father. No, you don't have to pay diary to the father. The father of a child is not the one that donated sperm. The father of the child is the one that raised the child. Are you with me? Anybody can be a sperm donor. Only the one that stayed there and raised the child is a father. Stop being a traditional minded person looking for a man that is non-existent. Am I talking to somebody here today? If that man never contributed to raising that child, don't go to him to pay a dowry. You are honoring irresponsibility. You are endorsing waywardness. It's not Christianly, it's ungodly. Is anybody hearing me here? If your father says so, tell your father your father is wrong. A man that gave birth to a child never took care of that child from primary school, secondary school, university and then because he donated spam and walked away. Your whole family will carry him, go, go, go to his house and he give you a list. How big is your mumu? Tomorrow now, this one will go viral again. Nami Tokam, you know, go kill me. Don't pay diary to that man. If you don't know where to pay diary, come here. I am the father. Yeah. 
Is anybody hearing me? A sperm donor is not a father. The one that raised the child is the father of the child. Don't let tradition take away truth from you. Thank you, my dear. I am here. I am here. When I give him my list, you will run. If you are here, say yes. yes. Now, please listen. Now, when you are cutting and you have gone beyond that issue of we are about to wed and all of that, you are planned, you are working on that, and you are about to do that. Also, part of the in-law conversation is how do we relate with in-laws? Are you with me? Yes, who comes? Who doesn't come? Not that I marry you as a young girl. As you are returning to my house, you come with four of your brothers. Or I marry as a young man. As I come in, I come into a house full of your mother, your senior auntie, you are not hearing me, and three of your elder sisters. All of them are there to supervise me. Who comes into our house and who doesn't come? These are difficult conversations where you must have them. Our time is up. Should I stop now? It's too tarty. I have to send you. Okay, let me rush through so we can go. Another conversation to have, that's number what now? Six. Number six. It's conversations about present health challenges. Present health challenges. Most young people don't talk about this. You can get married to a young lady. She already has problem, terrible problem with fibroid. And she's continually bleeding. And she doesn't tell the young man until they get to the altar. So they get married. She never told the man, I have fibroid, I keep bleeding. You're not hearing me. They get married, they go back home. One month into that, the man finds out. So he starts sighing every day. He starts sighing every day. Within six months, she has lost the love of the man. Well, yeah, two years, they say the marriage is breaking. You say, that man is very wicked. That man is very wicked. That man is, I don't, I don't accept breakup of marriage. But I want you to know that that girl was more wicked. You should have allowed him to make a clear-eyed decision. You are the one that put yourself at risk. Your desperation to get married made your package bad. Are you hearing me? Allow him. I was talking to one of uh, young ladies here that got divorced. And she said, this man came, wedded me. And because we are Christians and all that, we, they wedded in one church over there. And they came around. And she came around here after she has left the man. So I'm asking, what happened? He said, well, the night of our wedding, he said he was tired. So we didn't uh, meet together. Then after that, he gave me one excuse after another. One week passed. One month passed. I, I think you know where I'm going to. The thing, not the ghetto. And he, he knew long ago that the thing, not the ghetto. So when she was now trying to say, ah, what is going on? This is six months now. She told their pastor, their pastor said, you know, the Bible say, what God has joined together. I said, I said ah, God didn't join you. God didn't join you because God said, Enoch should not marry you. Jesus said, you Enoch should not marry. Anybody waiting, know the get up, shouldn't marry. They're not hearing me. He shouldn't marry. Hello? Why did she run? Because when she confronted them and all of that, he went and told his friend, and one of his friends came and called her to counsel her. How the husband said, you know, he's comfortable with her. Instead of exposing him, she can sleep with so and so. And then they can have the baby, and then they move on because people, she, he doesn't want it. So people even do it. 
I said, so I'm going to be living in your house and be playing her lottery outside. He said, no, I'd rather divorce and move on. And I said to her, you made the right decision. People may argue about it. Say, stay here, pray until God makes the thing move. <laughs> when the thing moves, the thing come. If you don't like me, call police. I dare here. And I'm a servant of God. Did you catch what I'm talking to you about? Now let all this religious garbage kill you. Now please listen. If you are going to get married, have a conversation about your health. For example, you have diabetes, you have high blood pressure, you have all of that. It's part of the discussion. Ask and answer. Am I clear? Every serious health issue, discuss it. Had somebody that wedded in this church some years ago. Not wedded in this church. Actually, I've told you the story before. I told her not to wed. She got somebody who is an unbeliever. And brought a person. And I said, no, this man is not born again. I said, please, I understand you want to wed him and you love him. I said, allow me, to bring him, let him come to my office. I'll talk to him, open the Bible, and try to lead him to Christ. When I'm done... He will hang around here, go through our discipleship class, go through our, our workers' training, and give, him, give me at least six months with him. If he's convinced, if, if he settles down to serve God, then I allow you to wed him. If not, leave him alone. He's an unbeliever. We set an appointment for the day he was going to come, she was going to come with him. Both of them didn't show up. And I got annoyed. I called her, she gave excuses and all of that, so I kept quiet. After some time, I heard that she was going to get wedded. They were going to do traditional wedding. And she was an assistant head of the department. So I asked them to fire her. And I told them that none of the leaders should go for the traditional wedding. So they got, some people got annoyed. Why well, am I getting angry? I said, because I gave her instruction. She shouldn't wed this man. I don't hate the man. All I wanted was to have an opportunity of leading him to Christ. Well, but she didn't know. That the man didn't reveal to her that he had health challenges. He didn't even know the extent of his own health challenge, but he was having health challenges. So they get, got wedded. Are you with me? I was planning that they would get here and within nine months I would bring them to the altar. Six months to prepare him and then now they have their three months to pre go to marriage class and wed. As they got wedded, within six months they found that he had leukemia, bone cancer. She never saw him in their first wedding anniversary. He was already in the grave. Now, I said, if she waited, this thing would have popped up. Is that true? Yes. So sometimes the devil does some of those things. If you are willing, say yes. yes. Now, other people have STDs, HIV, they won't tell people. Some of them are sickle cell. They won't tell them. If you're in a relationship with somebody and it's proceeding toward that, tell the person. One time I had to send a young man out of this church because he did something that I consider extremely wicked. Two young ladies were quarreling with one another that he was the fiancé of one and the other one was trying to take her. You are not hearing. You know, what do we see for pastoring? Eh? In plenty. Of. So they referred them to me because the quarry was getting nasty. He said, Papa, get involved. Talk to these girls. And one of them was actually a long time coming to church member. The other one, I don't know her too well, so I don't. But this one, I see her in church often. So when they came, I was talking to them. And I turned to one of them, the one that I didn't know much. I said, have you ever slept with this young man? He said, you know, pastor, you know. I said, I don't know. It's a direct question. It deserves a direct answer, yes or no. Simple. He said, uh, 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 uh. Yes, yes. You know, you know, when people are demonized, yes. yes. <laughs> I 
I kept quiet. I said, wait for me. I said for the other one. The one that I've seen in church for more than two, three years. I said, did you sleep with this young man? He said, Papa, it was temptation. <laughs> I said, go out. I said, for the young man, he came in. I said, did you tell both of them that you are HIV positive? I said, because sometime back, about a year ago, you came to me to pray for you about your HIV status. Have you been healed? Because I didn't hear you testify. He said, no, he's still positive. I said, did you, take, do, did you have any protection with them? No. Did you tell any one of them? No. That one that I asked first, the one that was new in church, is still HIV positive till now. The other one, I didn't know when she went to do her status. I, didn't, I asked her for a report. He didn't know. She's not with us in the headquarters here. So I just ignored them. No, no, no. Can you imagine? So I called him. I said, I don't want to see you ever again till I die. Leave you and never return. Your heart is satanic. But you see, the girls that slept with him, had all the message I preached. And they made their choice that to get married, they must give their all. So they have given their all. Now he didn't marry any one of them and they're both sick as far well as I know. I speak over you. May you never be the victim of any devil. <laughs> Ask question. It's not the first time it has happened here. Not the first time Pastor Chikwe is not here. There's one that we handled some time ago. You know, Pastor Nat. This young man came to church. And uh, a few short months, he has met one girl. I want to marry, I want to marry, I want to marry. They start running up and down and all of that. And I said, go and do your HIV test. Pastor Nat was the one that brought him to me. He did the HIV test. He wasn't just positive. The blood, the viral count was so high. You know, this guy is about to go into full-blown AIDS. So I called the girl and I said, no, you can't continue the relationship. This guy is almost dying. He said, I'm going forward. I will marry him. So I asked a question. I said, have you been sleeping with him? She said, yes. The moment I told her there was a child, she knew without being told that she has, because she had been sleeping with him without protection. And when she went to check, she was HIV positive. We wedded both of them. He's dead now already. After he died, she left the church. I don't know her condition now. But she made a choice. Every one of you here, please ask about health status. We are not crazy. Talking to you is for your safety, not for our safety. Do they hear me? Yes, sir. If I don't share these stories with you, you wouldn't know what we see in church. We are not children. We have seen a lot too. You are not wiser than us. You only think you are wise. The next one. Is I can't take this beyond the next 15 minutes, so I have to stop. Anywhere we stop, we go. Next time we continue. Is that okay? Because we started at 1. It's going to 3 o'clock. We have to close. It's maximum 2 hours. We must be out of here. Okay? Yes. We'll continue later. The next conversation is conversation about your finances and obligations. About your finances and obligations. How rich are you and how poor are you? Talk about it. Who are you owing and who are you not owing? Not I marry you. The Sunday after the wedding, somebody comes and knocks on the door and says, Madam, give me your ring. I say, Why? <laughs> he says, Collateral. The ring is collateral. No, 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 no. <laughs> is anybody hearing me? <laughs> Don't do that. A lot of people lie. 
You are not hearing me. A young man was engaged to a lady. I've seen things in this church. Was engaged to a lady. He said he works in Shell. He was a jobless young man. He will dress well. As the wedding was approaching, he told her how he ran into a problem with his boss, how they suspended his salary, and all of those things. She should be able to do this and do this. So she started doing some things until she came to me. And I said, Shell doesn't work like that. I said, I can call some people in Shell to verify. There's no way you have a problem with his boss and they suspend his salary. No, 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 verify. The first traditional wedding. Only to find out he has all these two years they've been cutting. He had no job. He had one story after another to tell her. And she keeps giving him money. Waiting for when they're going to release his account that his boss asked them to block. They all job too much. Oh. The people where they come to church, some of them are humans. Human and demon mixed together. Don't take anything on face value. Am I talking to somebody here today? We have seen a lot. That's what we teach, the way we teach. Are they still hearing me? So be sure. What is a person's obligations? Let me take the last one for today. Conversations about sexuality and emotional needs. Please talk about what sex means to you and what makes you feel loved. As you're approaching marriage, you must talk about that. Particularly those of you that are very holy. When I mean holy, I don't mean living right. I mean the holy wedge. <laughs> because if you are not living right, you are not the one I want to pastor. If you have my voice, say yes. yes. So when I'm talking about holy, we don't really disparage morality. Moral holiness is part of what you are here to do. Is that true? Yes. But there are some people who think that holiness means you don't talk about anything that is canal. So they're very holy. Are you with me? They won't talk about that. Now, even if you don't talk about it before you get married, the day after your wedding, you must have that conversation. You must tell the man what it, what it means to satisfy your emotional needs. And she must, you must tell her what it means. One of the reasons you need to discuss it before you get married is in case this person is not my type, let me let her go. There are some things some people cannot do. You are not hearing me. There are some demands you cannot put on certain people. It's not their lifestyle. You are not hearing me. So a lot of young men have been in Egypt and their own Egypt is a deep, deep part of Egypt. You are not hearing me. And they want to get a virgin in church and use that to practice all the things. How one young girl used to hang on the wall for them. Now that you are born again, all things are. And if your own has not passed away, leave our sister alone. Go back to Egypt. There are people that we are in Egypt with you who are born again. Allow them, they have all the knowledge of how to rotate on a fan. Are you hearing me? Go get people that are your age. When I mean age, I don't mean you are 40 and are 40. I mean people that went as far as you went in Egypt. They have all the knowledge. Not you get an 18 year old girl here who knows nothing. And you are telling her to give you all the things you found in Egypt. After you say, I am not satisfied. I am not satisfied. You cannot be satisfied. 
You have trained yourself that you can never be satisfied. You need deliverance. A demon is inside you. We need to. We need to cast him out of you. Is anybody hearing my voice here? So you must discuss that. There are many other things to discuss. There are about 10 of them, but I stop here because it's 2.55. You say, Pastor, how do we make that discussion? Let me just close this now. Set specific discussion dates and meet in a good place. Don't meet in the man's house. Don't meet in your house. Set discussion dates, meet in a good place. Don't discuss all of these things in one day. Take them one by one. I have a time frame for discussing them. Now, take time to listen to the other person calmly. And when you speak, speak with courtesy. Let the person hear you clearly what you think. Please listen. Young ladies, please look up here. One of the things you're going to find a biggest problem when you get married is this. Men had to talk to a woman who cannot say what is in her mind. All the young men here, what I'm saying is that true? That's one of the worst things that bring crisis in marriage. Women will run around issues. Run around issues. Meander, meander. When you say talk, they won't talk. And then when you do something, they now hold you. He said, that's what I was saying. He said, when did you say it? He said, I was thinking it. You are not hearing. Anybody hearing what I'm talking about? No, 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 no. Talk clearly with courtesy. Make your case. Are you with me? Now, when you are having a discussion, please listen. And this is a very, very, very key point. Make sure you understand each other's opinions and positions. Make sure. Listen, don't assume you understand. When the person finishes telling you what he thinks, repeat it for him the way you understand it. And say, this thing we're talking about sexuality and all of that. Uh, are you telling me that uh, uh, you believe in this or that you don't believe? Or this is the boundary. What is this what we're agreeing on? Repeat it so the person can hear what you said and either say yes or no. Because many times people leave a discussion at the point of discussion without decision. Do you hear me? They leave it at the point of discussion without decision. When you have a discussion and you don't arrive at a decision, you can't have an action point. Are they hearing me? So you repeat it for the person. Young man, the same thing. Understand one another, repeat it and then act on that. Because it's your destiny you are negotiating. All I'm telling you, some of you will look at it, you will don't do it, but I am having a home that is working. When your own doesn't work, we add you to a prayer list. <laughs> if you help me, say yes. Another thing is this, if your, positions don't, if your positions differ, if you find out that your stand and her stand differ in any discussion, don't be quick to make compromise. Just say, okay, okay, let me think about it. You think about it, we'll discuss it another day. Don't be quick to make compromise. When you come out, you call a leader and ask questions. Call somebody a mentor and ask questions. When you get the opinion of other people, next discussion you get back to that based on the counsel you got. Don't be quick to make compromise. Your compromise can wreck you. Are you with me? People that have low self-esteem and people that just want to make sure the marriage and the relationship continue, they quickly say, okay, 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 I adjust to you. In adjusting, you miss your future. Don't do that. Did you hear me? Now, another thing to do, that's number six. Take notes and decide on how to follow up the decisions. Write down something. Write down something when you're making the decision. And finally, pray and affirm each other before and after each session. Before you start the discussion, pray. After you finish the discussion, pray. And affirm your love for each other. You know, whatever we're discussing, just don't forget I love you. Don't forget I care for you. Don't forget I want to be in this relationship with you. But we need to talk about these things. Affirm your love for the person and pray together before getting to the discussion and after that. Did we catch you? Did I try? Give the Lord a clap as we rise.